In the previous lecture, I left you with the challenge of creating a spawner to spawn patients. All right, so what we're going to do now is to actually write that, and I'll show you my method. Yours might be a little bit different, but as long as it gets the patients instantiated and onto your map, then we're all good. Okay, so first of all, we actually need our patient to be a prefab. Now, if you remember, he did start out as a prefab. So we've made some changes to our basic patient. So you want to go and click on your patient and then let's just drag that in and I'm going to come up into the inspector and we want to override all of these things that we've done to our patient. So click on apply all to apply those back to the prefab. Okay so now let's create a spawner. In our hierarchy, let me just scroll all of these things up. We're going to right click and create an empty of spawner. Okay, and that's gonna be the position of where our spawner will be. Now it's currently just positioned there. So let's drag it over here. Now, if you wanna see where it is besides these axes, you can use the trick that I've done before with the waiting area and the reception, which is to add a cube mesh renderer or a box collider or something so that you can actually see it. Now it needs to be outside of the hospital and it needs to be near the ground. Now the ground's at zero. So over in the inspector, I'll have a look at my Y for that. I'm gonna actually set it to let's say seven. It doesn't matter if it's slightly up in the air because they will spawn there and then just drop down to the ground and then move in. All right, so let's leave that there. Now we're going to create the code for that. So create C sharp script and call it spawn. And let's go ahead and open that up and edit it. It's going to require, first of all, our game object. So our prefab, so it'll be public game object patient prefab and then how many patients we want so let's put that in here public int num patients and then down in start we're going to create a for loop for int i equals zero i is less than num patients I plus plus and then inside this loop we will instantiate our patients okay so we want to instantiate and we're going to use our patient prefab and let's see we want to put it at this dot transform dot position which is your spawner position and Quaternion dot identity for basically a default rotation and we spell transform correctly. Now the problem with this that I'm just thinking now is if we loop through this all in the start we're going to end up with what 100 patients straight away. Now that might be what you want. I'd rather have this spawning them at particular intervals. So instead I'm going to go down here and put void um, let's go spawn patient and inside of here I will move this instantiate code so control X put that down there now that actually makes our num patients and our loop superfluous but now you've seen how you would do that if you wanted to create a whole bunch of patients all in one go and uh, let's just leave that there actually and we will do that anyway okay so we will then um, put this instantiate back up there so this is all your initial lot of patients and then what we're going to do is invoke spawn patient after say five seconds and then inside of spawn patient, we will get it to invoke itself. So you keep getting patients being spawned. Um, and now in here, we're going to have random.range for the time between patients. So let's say we want patients every two to 10 seconds. 
that's going to do it. So now you can see two ways that you could actually spawn. Right, so we'll save this and let's go back into Unity. And we want to get our spawn script and drag it onto our spawner over here. And then we're going to assign our patient prefab, which is back in our prefabs folder. So if we go to our prefabs folder, we've got our patient there, we can drag and drop him into the patient prefab. And the number of patients, this is the initial number that get created. And then, you know, one gets spawned every five seconds or whatever it was set to. So let's create an initial amount of five. And then they're going to drop out of the sky, basically, and start coming into the hospital. Now, this little guy here that's already in the hospital, you can delete him or just turn him off if you want to use him for testing things a little bit later. Okay, so let's just press play and have a look at what we get here. So there's our five that are initially spawned and they're all coming into the hospital. And then here comes the extra ones. So if we go over into our game view here, let me just set this to a high resolution image for you. Now they're gonna come and register and then once they've registered, they will move away after they shuffle past each other and then go into here. Right, so some little bits of debugging information at this point, if you find that they are um, not getting to their destination, uh, skipping over steps or whatever, like, you know, it's going to happen as you're trying to test this. The most common thing in this particular scenario or the use of the nav mesh is that the agents can't reach their destination. For example, down here, we're getting a big pile up in this waiting room. Now, remember that the waiting room has a specific location, which is one little tiny point. If I select that and let's just come over to here. OK, it's right there. So that means the agents have to get to that specific point to be considered in the waiting room. And if we have a look in the code for this, let's just pause. I'm gonna go back into the agent's scope code and have a look at our G agent code. In order to consider that they've actually reached a destination, if we have a look in the late update, we've got this line here for remaining distance. So it's going to consider that you've reached a destination waypoint on the nav mesh if you're within one distance. Now, if you're using unit sized agents like I am, I find that one is quite acceptable. You might want to make this a little bit bigger if you find that your agents just aren't reaching that location. Now, the other thing that could happen is if you set this to 20, then the agent will consider himself having reached a waypoint when he's like, 20 units away, which will make the actions look a bit odd. So it might make an agent look like he's reached the waiting room when he's still standing out here, which is something that you don't want. Okay, so that's that's one thing. Now, any agent that doesn't reach a waypoint will still be trying to execute one of the actions. Okay, and you can tell if you select an agent. So let's find someone who's actually still doing stuff, this guy here. And over in the inspector, let's find his parent patient. The go to waiting room, go to hospital and register. If you have a look on all of those things, you'll see that there is a public tick box at the bottom called running. That will tell you which action he is still trying to run. So this particular agent over here, he's at the reception desk. So he's obviously still registering. And if we have a look at his register, it is ticked to say that it is still in fact running. Now, if we press uh, unpress pause and wait for a moment until he's finished, you can see now that that has been unticked and he's now going to the waiting room instead. Okay, so now whilst this is going on, Let's pause again. Another way to have a look at, at debugging this is if we go into the console, you'll see that it's printing out the plans. And so here you can see it says the plan is go to hospital, register, go to waiting room. So this plan is actually happening in order. 
and I've collapsed down what's going on in the console because it will just be writing this out for every particular agent. But this is showing you that this is what the plan is that they've come up with, which is the plan that you wanted them to come up with. So that is at least all good. Right, so that is getting a whole bunch of agents running and spawning them. When we come back in the next lecture, I'll have to talk about a little bit more of debugging these scenarios because that's actually quite a big part of this. And we'll begin working on getting our nurse to run. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website, holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.